Did you know that there is an ingredient in some common foods that may extend, extend your life into triple digits? Please welcome to the show, Dr. Stephanie Van Watson. There is one side of you that is a business owner who created Fatty 15 as it stands, and there's another side of you that was doing this as a job. You know, is all excited about infectious diseases. Our lifespans and our health spans, you know, how long we're living healthfully, have actually been decreasing. More and more younger people are getting type 2 diabetes, heart disease. Then about 20 years ago, I was invited by the U.S. Navy to help start and lead a clinical research program to continually improve dolphins' health and welfare. We discovered that this C15, an odd chain saturated fatty acid, the first essential fatty acid we discovered in over 90 years. And it all happened thanks to you know, an effort to take care of dolphins. When you found this discovery, when did you sit down with yourself and go, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna open a brand because- <laughs> the, the whole saying, right? If you wanna get something done, ask a, ask a mom. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie, thanks so much for coming on. I'm so excited to have you here. I have been obsessed with longevity and health in general. And I wanted to ask you, how did you get on this journey? Cause you not only, founded this brand, but you also discovered it. Yeah, that's that's right. I was a lucky one, right? Right. Good, good turn of events. Uh, yeah. So, so Margarita, it's, it's so nice to be here. Uh, yeah. Veterinary epidemiologist and was working for the World Health Organization. Um, you know, was all excited about infectious diseases and epidemiology. And then about 20 years ago, I was invited by the U.S. Navy to help start and lead uh, a clinical research program to continually improve dolphins' uh, health and welfare, especially as they get older. And that unexpectedly led to the discovery of um, basically dolphins. Some dolphins were aging healthier than others. And we discovered that this C15, an odd chain saturated fatty acid, the first essential fatty acid we discovered in over 90 years. Uh, and it all happened thanks to, you know, an effort to take care of dolphins. That's incredible. So are we more similar dolphins than you would otherwise think? It's a great point. Yes. So because we are mammals, we are large brained, we live long lives. It ends up that even though, you know, if you look at the evolutionary tree, we're far apart. So it's not like we're really mm. close together, but because we both figured out ways to leverage nature to live a long time with large brains, we have, uh, found the same tricks, basically. And one of those is um, the use of C15 to be able to make ourselves more stable, which literally helps us live longer than a mouse or worm or fly. And what is C15 found in, in nature usually? So if you couldn't supplement it, where would we get it from? Right. So we used to always get our C15 from whole dairy fat. Uh, that was our primary source of where we got C15. Uh, and, you know, we're not drinking cow's milk as much as we used to, and especially whole fat cow's milk. So globally, C15 levels have been declining because of this decrease intake. And, you know, also because milk isn't what it used to be. So when cows are fed corn, they have less C15 in their milk than when they're fed grass. And so a lot of changes that have happened over the last, you know, 40, 50 years, Margarita have, you know, resulted in lower C15 levels in our food. Um, and that's resulted in lower C15 levels in us. And what kind of effect is that having on our bodies and our longevity and just in general? Right. I mean, cause you, a lot of you know, these discussions about longevity are about, we're doing great. And then how do we live to 200? <laughs> right. Mm, and that's and, right. <laughs> in actuality, our lifespans and our health spans, you know, how long we're living healthfully have actually been decreasing over the last few years. And not just because of COVID, right? That even before COVID, our health uh, lifespans were declining. More and more younger people are getting type 2 diabetes, heart disease, this thing called fatty liver disease um, that showed up really in 1980 and now affects one in three people globally. So what we're coming to understand is that C15 is critical to helping to shore up our cell membranes and make them stable. And with the lack of C15 regarding your question, when we don't have enough C15 in our cell membranes, our cells get weak, they fall apart and are making us more susceptible is the leading hypothesis to these diseases. So we just got to get it back into our cells and into our bodies to restore that health.
So is it similar to omega-3s or is it completely different? It's completely different. Um, they both fit under the category of essential fatty acid. Um, so, you know, when we talk about essential fatty acids, it's these are nutrients that our bodies need in order to stay healthy, um, maintain baseline health, but our bodies can't make. So that means that we have to get it from our food. So omega-3s, the best source um, of omega-3s is from fish, um, if, you, if you eat fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for... Uh, so these, you know, omega-3s are these polyunsaturated fatty acids, oils at room temperature. C15, on the other hand, is a stable saturated fatty acid, an odd chain saturated fat that does kind of a yin and yang um, complementary effect with omega-3s. So it helps make our cells more stable um, while omega-3s make our cells kind of more bendy. And when we get older, actually more susceptible to, to age-related breakdown. It's amazing because when I look at the, I'm like holding up the little pill right now. It's really fascinating. I took it a few times. It doesn't have that fishy taste that you'd expect like fatty acids to have, but also it's a powder inside, isn't it? So the texture of it's completely different. Um, who would you recommend take these? So we're, we're finding that, you know, everybody needs, um, C15. That's how it's the science is really playing out that it's truly essential from, um, young children all the way up through our older years. Um, the people who, you know, need C15 the most with regard to replenishment are younger people who may not have had a lot of exposure to whole dairy fat, um, growing up or currently, because like plant-based milks, for example, have no C15 in them. So people who are deficient in C15. And then as we get older, no matter what we eat, unfortunately, our C15 levels decline. I'm on that side. Um, and so, uh, taking C15 as we're older. And it's funny, Margarita, like our, our, um, best, um, most enthusiastic fan base are come from the oldest, um, customers because it's, you know, a lot of people say it fixes you where you're broken. And so it's like, Oh, I can play golf or I can get up and have energy during the day. And so it's, it's really cool seeing how it's, truly helping reverse this aging process um, that's, you know, kicked in. I've been on that quest to try and like replenish all of my, I know it's such a strange thing, but having two children, oh. I'm like, where are my vitamins and nutrients <laughs> gone? I want, why is my back hurting? I'm trying to pick up my child and it's hurting. And it's like, you don't think about these things um, when you're younger. My producer's sitting there like, I'm 20, leave me alone. Um, <laughs> it's It's amazing how much of a difference it makes. But can we go back to the whole how you were working with dolphins and you discovered it. Sure. There is one side of you that is a business owner who created Fatty 15 as it stands. And there's another side of you that was doing this as a job. How did you, when you found this discovery, when did you sit down with yourself and go, oh, do you know what? I'm going to open a brand because <laughs> a lot of the women who listen to this podcast, and as many women, you know, are interested in how to build business and how to be an amazing woman in the space. And how do you go from a discovery to creating a business that's an endeavor and a half. Right. You know, uh, it's what the, the whole saying, right? If you want to get something done, ask a, ask a mom. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, you know, we don't really have time to dilly dally and we just get stuff done. Um, so yeah, I was, you know, working again, you know, mainly as, you know, as a veterinarian, as a public health scientist. Um, when this discovery was made, obviously like spent a, about like 10 years continuing to work on the science, but we did get to a point and I was working with, um, have co-founded this company with, um, Eric, who's my husband and Navy physician. We're a military family. And we got to a point where our advisors were saying, listen, the science, like you keep going with the science, which is great, but it, you're there. Like it's time to bring this nutrient to the world and mm. the moral obligation to do so. <laughs> so, you know, no pressure. Uh, and so with that, we were able to work, um, uh, because I made the discovery when I was at the Navy, uh, this is, you know, Navy technology and, and invention. So we're able to work cooperatively with the Navy for me to you know, take that big jump, right? Where it's like, okay, I'm going to leave my, you've been in public service my whole life to take that jump um, and start a new business um, to, you know, to bring C15 and bring Fatty15 to the world. A huge, great driver has been, you know, it's really something that is making a meaningful difference. And so that makes all the little bumps in the road uh, not so scary because it's, you know, it's a, a good purpose. 
Yeah, I was thinking about scary and working with your husband is one of those things. <laughs> How have you managed? You know, it's been balance? great. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, it was, uh, we didn't quite know, like, how are, how is this going to work? And, and, you know, are we going to be able to compliment each other? Are we going to step on each other's toes? And, you know, it took probably about six months, uh, Margarita. And then we really figured out, luckily, like Eric's strengths are, he's just, you know, he's so good at operationally. Um, he serves as a COO and he gets things done. He works with every single member, goes to every single meeting and he makes sure that everything gets done. And my focus is more on the science and the strategy and outreach and being able to make sure, you know, that we're communicating, uh, the science effectively, uh, to be able to, to share, share the discovery. So it's, it's actually worked out amazingly. And to be honest, I can't imagine doing this without them. It's been, it's been a blast. And I read um, an article yesterday when I was um, looking into what you guys do, that he was away for a part of the time when you were starting the brand and you had a toddler at home, was it? Yes. Yeah, so Ben was, t- if you could imagine, between oh two God. and two and a half years old, Eric was deployed in Afghanistan at the height of the war. And so, yeah, that also changes your perspective. Right? So when you're starting right. a new business, we're like, ah, that's nothing. Like, you know, we've, yeah. we've been through uh, a lot more challenging times, but, you know, in the end, it's, it's definitely made our relationship stronger. But boy, during that time, it was tough. It was real tough. I can't imagine. I've got a three-year-old and a new baby. And actually, I've been more productive now in my life than I ever was as a 20-year-old. I don't know what I was doing. I was like, what? when I thought I was busy in my 20s, what was I doing? Literally. It is funny, it's right? Wild. You become incredibly efficient uh, and you're just, yeah, able to knock stuff out because um, you don't really have a, cho- have a choice. That's so good. So, to round off the kind of female founder part, what would you say to anybody who's wanting to found a business and wanting to really put themselves into something? How would you, is there any advice that you could give them? You know, I would say find a good mentor or two, um, who have been, who have um, been on that path or are in the area in which you're looking to delve into, um, whether, you know, whether it's start starting a certain type of business or going into a certain area of find some experts, um, in that area that you really respect and work with them closely, beg for them to be critical and to figure out all the reasons why it can't be done. And then, mm-hmm. you know, be committed and find the way that it can be. <laughs> can be done. You know, it's, it's, you know, make sure you follow the good guidance, but it's, that it's invaluable to be able to use mentors who can help guide you and and make sure that, you know, you can, you can succeed and have the support that you need to get to go through that exciting time. Amazing. And now onto my shallow question, is this going to help me age slower, like visibly slower? Are you it, serious? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so there are a lot of, I mean, there's no guarantees that come on the bottle, but, um, you know, cause the way fatty 15 works is, um, you know, like I said, it goes into the cell, it goes into the cell membrane and it helps make our cells, um, stronger and younger. And we're made a hundred percent of ourselves. Right. And so by, a, by being able to reverse the aging process in our cells, there are these things called hallmarks of aging. And it's mm-hmm. defined specifically, right, how we age at the cellular level. And we and others have been able to show that um, the pure C15 ingredient in fatty 15 effectively reverses four of those hallmarks of aging. So it stabilizes the cells. It repairs mitochondrial function. So all that energy, right? The battery powerhouses of our cells that we learned, you know, in third grade about mitochondria, it helps get those back up and running and it helps activate receptors that to put it simply, help balance our immunity and metabolism. You know, as we get older, our metabolism and immunity get kind of out of whack. We feel Mm. it. Um, And then it also helps with um, decreasing inflammation. So when you do all of those things, it effectively is reversing the process of aging. And so that translates into things that, you know, Margarita, you and I care about, right? That for me, like my joint pain um, stopped and my skin's really dry and it's helped to make it you know, more moist and less dry and red. Uh, my hair got thicker because I was going through menopause. And so all those things that it, your aging becomes even more accelerated 
when you go through that process. So that's fun. Um, but Fatty 15 was really helpful for me to be able to kind of pull back on that accelerated aging. That's amazing. And when you take it, how would you recommend someone takes it every day in the morning? How yeah, do you exactly. So, so, sorry. Yeah. So exactly. So we, the, the best way to take it is because if you think about it as a vitamin, so this discovery and the, the way C15 words works is the same way as you think about a vitamin, like vitamin A or vitamin. So you need certain levels of it routinely and in order to maintain the healthy levels in your cells. So to take it every day, most people take them in the, take it in the morning, just one in the morning and you can enjoy the kind of the near term benefits, um, which includes, you know, for a lot of people, a better mood. Even at night, it's a deeper night's sleep. I used to like roam the hallways <laughs> at night. Oh, you know, doing that. What is that about? I, I don't know. know. It's right. I know. It's like I feel like my son is going to think I'm the ghost of mom is walking up and down the hallways, right? In the middle of the night, and so it stopped that. Um, no. And so, oh my gosh, yeah. So it, and crazy. it's just something that, again, you know. It, not an amazing dis discovery. It's just unveiling what's been there all along um, that we've just always needed uh, as long with mammals. So it's it's helping again with balancing all those things. So I take it in the morning and and I actually open up the, the capsule and I melt it in my coffee. But you can see mm -hmm. the pill's so small, it it doesn't matter. It's an easy to swallow pill. And when you say it affects your metabolism, because I've always wanted this debunked, is there such thing as a metabolism and things that can affect it? I know that's a big question, but yeah. when someone's considering taking, you know, a fatty acid supplement to affect the metabolism, how does it actually work for the layman? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question because you just, you know, everybody hears the word, right? And it gets thrown around a lot. And so specific for metabolism and C15, we know that C15 activates this pathway called AMPK. Um, mm -hmm. And AMPK is the same mechanism that um, like metformin, leverages. So metformin is one of the top used drugs for type 2 diabetes. So what it does is it helps make sure our cells are uh, as sensitive to insulin and it improves our cells' ability to take up glucose appropriately so that it's not sitting around in our blood and causing high glucose levels. So it really helps with glucose metabolism. We now also know that it helps with lipid metabolism. So high cholesterol and high triglycerides. There was just a clinical trial that uh, came out at the end of November last year where with C15 supplementation. And they showed even, and it was among women who had fatty liver disease. And what they showed were that the women who to had a low calorie diet plus Mediterranean diet. These were the groups. The first group was low, mm -hmm. low calories. The next group was low calories plus Mediterranean. And the third was low calorie Mediterranean plus C15 supplementation. And they showed that that third group above and beyond the benefits of the first two had lower LDL cholesterol. And they also had improved gut microbiome as well. So, it, you know, it's, we're still discovering things. I'd say every two weeks, there's a new peer reviewed publication coming out about C15 uh, and its benefits from groups all over the world. It's been really exciting. That's so cool. You must be so excited to like bring something into the world <laughs> that works. Do you know what I mean? That's just right. It's been, cool. it's it's been fun. It's been fun. It's not, I mean, go science, right? And so just yeah. the rig and the dolphins were just incredible, um, you know, and relevant uh, to be able to make these discoveries and so great to be able to help dolphins and then they turn around and, and help us right away. And why do they work for the military? I know someone's going to ask me in this podcast, so I'm going to ask you. Yeah, absolutely. So the Navy has, you know, they've cared for bottlenose dolphins for over 60 years um, here in San Diego, uh, off the off of the um, coast of California. And the uh, Navy has, uh, basically, they help look for lost objects in the ocean. They live in San Diego Bay, go out into the open ocean, every single day and every day they choose to come back. So like from a veterinarian, Margarita, I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't know how I'd feel about dolphins mm. in, the, in the Navy. And my first day walking down the pier and seeing how this population is, they live over 50% longer than dolphins in the wild. In the wild, they live to about 20. Navy dolphins routinely live um, 40 and even to 50s in their 50s. So this is a, a very well cared for population. Um, that, uh, yeah, has, has been uh, an, an honor to be able to, with which to work. Do you miss working with them? I do. 
I do. Um, so it's, it's good. It's, sometimes they still get to say hello. <laughs> and how do they, how did the dolphins take the supplement? Surely not, surely not a supplement. How do they, how did you used to administer to them? Yeah. So we started by, um, you're working with the Navy of, um, finding fish. So it ends up for them because they don't eat dairy fat or ice mm-hmm. cream, uh, that they get their C15 from specific types of fish. So some fish have C15, others don't. And even in the fish that have them, it's primarily in the skin and the head, the parts that mm. we don't tend to eat. Um, many cultures don't tend to eat. So, um, we were able to, the Navy was able to go find the fish types that have higher C15 in them in order to help keep their C15 levels. In addition, they're going to start getting um, fatty 15 as well, because unfortunately the ocean waters are getting a little warmer and there's Mm -hmm. less fat in the fish. So even fish that have high C15 uh, don't have as much as they used to. So um, they'll, what they do is they'll take the capsules and they put them inside the fish and they feed the fish to the dolphins. Really? Yeah. That's so cool. And for the person who's listening and they heard you say that, listen, we can get it from dairy. Can you explain a little bit more? Because I've looked into this because now I'm obsessed with longevity, but how dairy is different when it's not grass fed and it is, you know, um, the cows are fed, fed differently. So why is C15 different to just getting, you know, some whole milk and drinking it? Right. And you, to be honest, for kids, I think, you know, we are pushing, um, to say, Hey, let's revisit nutritional guidelines because, um, here, at least in the U S every child that turns, as soon as your child turns two years old, um, as a parent, the pediatrician, um, is, is more likely than not to tell you to take your child off of whole fat milk. Um, so we're, Really? Push, yes, yes. Regardless, Good even life. if, oh even if God. they're perfectly healthy. So. Why? Uh, there's just a sense that it's, you know, it's healthier to take to avoid saturated fats. And what we now know is that there are good fats, good saturated fats and bad saturated fats. The good ones are, have these odd number of carbons in it, like C15. And the bad ones that are pro-inflammatory, kind of the traditional ones we've, you know, we've heard about are like C16 and C18 mm-hmm. have an even chain, even number. So there's very clearly, like it is, it is, not disputable <laughs> like with regard to the difference between there, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of studies that all show the same thing, higher C15, lower risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease, higher even chain C16, C18, higher risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease. So that gets us to the milk question. Um, you know, milk has about 1% of C15, um, which is relatively high to any other food source. So it is our primary source. However, um, cow's milk, whole fat milk has over 40% of these even chain saturated fatty acids. So our kids can probably handle it fine if they're not lactose intolerant. But when you talk about what food source or exposure over, you know, we're going to live right to 100, 120 or more with longevity, that that is why um, we worked with the Navy to help develop C15, fatty 15 as a pure C15. That's just the good, um, you know, anti-inflammatory C15 fat that doesn't have to compete with these bad fats. Um, so. And is it true that omega threes have some toxic traits in absorption or did I make that up? No, you didn't, you didn't make it up. So, you know, omega threes are tricky and it's, it has to do with chemistry. Um, and it's so omega threes are essential, um, for our health, for our cells. But the problem is it's unlike C15, omega-3s are really, like we talked about, really fragile um, fatty acids. And so they have what's called double bonds in their structure and multiple. And every time you have a double bond, the oxygen can attack it, which is why it's an oil at room temperature, omega-3s, and also why they go rancid, right, when they get exposed to oxygen. So the same reason why you don't leave oil out open, you know, bottle open Mm -hmm. uh, in your kitchen is is the same um, issue and the risk of omega-3s in the bottle have that they're very susceptible to going bad in the bottle. Um, multiple studies have repeatedly shown that half, if you just take any number of omega-3 supplements, um, fish oil supplements off, um, you know, at your local store, 50% of them will have lipid peroxidation levels that are above uh, international 
um, voluntary safety standards. And it's, yeah. And it's not the producer's fault. It's just, it's a really fragile fatty acid. uh, And it's really hard to keep those from being exposed (laughs) to oxygen. You know what? You just take vitamins usually in life. You just take them, whatever. When I got pregnant, obviously you have to be more careful, right? And you start doing all this research and you find out things like this. So yeah, mind blown. Yeah. So these yeah, and are way more stable. These are, yeah. And so this is, there's no double bonds in C15. And so again, it's just nature, right? That nature has made where C15 is incredibly stable, uh, highly resistant to lipid peroxidation. So it does great in the bottle. More importantly, when it gets into our cell membranes, it helps make our cells and therefore us more armored and more resilient against stressors. Um, and it's amazing because it's just, it sounds fancy, but it's just this simple, like it's a brick and it's a brick that mm. goes into your cells and just makes them more stable. There's really not a lot of fanciness about it, um, but essential. Uh, for How much proving did you have to do when you um, discovered this uh, in dolphins about humans? How did you make that transition? Because I imagine if I made that, dis- how do you come up to someone and explain that? <laughs> right. And so we, uh, so first we found the association was, we looked at, you know, we saw that some dolphins were aging, um, better than others, despite the fact that they're in the same environment, getting the same healthcare. Uh, and so we used this technology called metabolomics to look at thousands of small molecules in their fish and in their blood um, to see which small molecules predicted the healthiest aging dolphins. And, you know, Marguerite, we assumed it was going to be omega-3s because all they eat are mm. fish. So we're like, well, for sure. And omega-3s didn't even make the list. And what? we, yeah, so we were just like shocked and surprised. Like not only did omega-3s not make the top, you know, list, there was a saturated fat sitting at the top of C15. We're like, what? So we, from there, we then moved pure C15 into the lab and spent um, three years to do eight studies to say, okay, is it associated with better health or does it actually cause it? So that's where we did a lot of studies to understand how does C15 work? How much do we need to eat um, to absorb to reach specific levels? What is it doing? So we're able to really figure out, um, that's where we figured out not only is it beneficial and an active um, essential nutrient for our bodies, but again, it was a met these rare criteria of being an essential fatty acid, you know, the first to be discovered in 90 years. Uh, So it was, yeah, all just basically follow. And and that was a good example of, we reached out to one of the world's experts in fatty acid, um, uh, Dr. Ed Dennis, and he was initially super skeptical because he's like, oh, come on. (laughs) He's like, we all know C15. Mm. It's not relevant. How, How could we all have missed it? But as a good mentor, he said, but listen, if you were right, then you would do, here are the tests you would do to test out your hypothesis. So he was willing to take that extra step and say, well, maybe if you were right, then these things would happen. And that's, you know, it enabled uh, the, the rest of the path. And what did you find in those studies when you did them on human beings? Obviously, the dolphins had longevity. What did, how did the people react when you did it? Yeah. So all of those, so most of those tests were done mainly like in cell based studies. Mm-hmm. Um, so that we can, you know, understand in human cell based studies. Cause mm-hmm. so before we jumped from a dolphin to pure C15, we did lots of safety studies, um, and efficacy studies. And what's wonderful is that increasingly using these human cell based, they're basically diseases in a dish. You can mm-hmm. do so much now um, with that before you then jump into humans. So we were able to get a lot of knowledge from that. At the same time, there were all these large-scale epidemiological studies showing higher C15, right? It's a lower risk of this type 2 diabetes, heart disease, NAFLD. So we were able to combine what was happening in the lab with what was happening in the real world um, and then have confidence to bring it to the world. And when people started taking it, right, then that's when we yeah. started seeing these benefits we didn't even, weren't even on our radar, right? Dolphins couldn't tell us they were sleeping better or <laughs> or were less stressed during the day, uh, but I felt it. And so then um, we were able to you know, just basically continue the science and be able to start answering the questions of different benefits we were seeing and being able to explain it um, basically through these mechanisms in the lab. 
I'm excited to sleep through the night because I keep blaming my children, but now I'm just like awake, <laughs> having plotting thoughts. I'm like, what am I thinking about? This irrelevant things like. <laughs> oh yeah, why? Well, I, I, I don't know. Through. Maybe there's a an evolutionary reason for I don't know. It's sleep is really important, and so yeah. you know, uh, yeah. So when when we took. C15 and we were finding all these benefits. We did, you know, the, getting to your longevity, um, question and pursuit, um, which is wonderful. We all should be, um, doing that. Um, that we then tested C15 head to head against the leading longevity molecules, rapamycin, a carbose and metformin. And we were able to show through those same human cell based studies that C15 actually had more beneficial cell-based activities than even rapamycin, the leading one, and far more than metformin and carbo. So it just ends up, this is a longevity nutrient. We've been meant, we were meant to have all along and then we've taken it out of our <laughs> diet. And that helps explain why, you know, the world's a little broken. Um, and, you know, we're seeing more of a lot of these diseases in younger and younger people. And the amazing part is, you know, we have the opportunity to, to fix it relatively easily. And with the link with metformin, forgive me if I got that wrong, but does that mean it causes weight loss as well? If Because I know if you balance the blood sugars and insulin, it can cause like weight balance and weight loss. Is that a thing with fatty 15 or no? The best way to put it is, is Marguerite, is how you put with weight balance. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. we wouldn't recommend it like as a weight loss drug, but it would mm -hmm. be to make you healthier. It does for a lot of people, myself included, it decreases your cravings for snacks in between meals. And then, so that is, helps you eat healthier. Um, but yeah, but its primary role is, is not as a, as a primary weight loss drug. But, but I think maybe, maybe cheekily it will help me balance weight loss. But, um, I wanted to ask you, could a child take this or like pregnant women, breastfeeding, things like that? So we would, yes. And we went above and beyond. Um, so for, uh, requirements for bringing a supplement to the market and we did what's called generally recognized as safe. Um, and so that's called grass status. Mm -hmm. And it's usually, it's required for if you're going to put it as a, an ingredient in food for example, and it's new because like, let's say it's in chips and anybody could eat as many chips as they want. <laughs> so you want to make yeah. sure it's safe, right? The dose isn't controlled. Supplements, it is more controlled, but we really wanted to make sure that this was safe um, coming to the market. And so we did all those safety studies and have um, this generally recognized as safe, this grass status. And that is specifically for um, up to 250 milligrams um, per day. And our dose, our current dose is 100 milligrams mm -hmm. per day. And for um, children who are older than four, and this includes um, pregnant women and women who are nursing. Uh, okay. And so that was all reviewed by an independent team of toxicologists. And uh, that was their, their conclusions. Amazing. And last question before I let you go, because <laughs> everyone who's not watching, you've got incredible hair and really vibrant skin <laughs> and really good teeth. So what is your, apart from Fatty 15, what is your diet like? Because I feel like you would know some things we don't know. What do you eat? <laughs> I want to know. You know, I wanna I, know. I, I, I'm going to disappoint. Uh, yeah. So I, I, it's a balanced diet it is, and then just helping to control amount, which again, fatty 15 is helping with that mm -hmm. of, um, and then, you know, exercising the thing that I've definitely have entered into, um, which has been new for me is resistance training. So those, you know, I have like the goofy little colored weights, you know, that are like it. you buy at Target. I or it. Yes. <laughs> and I, I tell you, where you're like, that has, made a world of difference for me and my energy. I'm just like, oh, activating your muscles, like aerobic is good. But I just, and, you know, many others have, have found this, you know, through extensive studies that it's just as important to use our muscles. You're carrying your, your babies, your kids around, mm -hmm. and that's good. You got some good resistance training there. <laughs> so. They are oddly heavy, these children. <laughs> I don't know why. But I think with regard to diet is just don't eat too much of any, anything. And it, increasingly we're learning it probably don't get rid completely of anything either. It's just keeping a good balance and let nature, nature kind of tells us what we're supposed to eat. And, and that's a good way to, to stay healthy. 
Have you seen that um, kind of, it's like a meme, but they're saying millennials are aging slower than the generation before or after because we are putting fats in our diet for the first time. Have you seen that? I have. The generation before didn't have butter, they didn't have fats, everything like that. So yeah. it's, so well, hey, go millennials. We're doing yeah. something, right? It comes full <laughs> circle, right? It just takes a generation, <laughs> takes a generation sure. or so. Yeah. I remember in the 1970s when the whole, you know, whole dairy fat got, taken out of our diets and we moved to like blue milk and it was, you know, it was, ugh, it was terrible. And yeah, it, fake everything, fake foods. And I yeah. think it's time to put fats back in our diet. And I'm, this is my fifth day on it. So I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm going to report to you how it goes. I'll be Please sleeping. Do. Oh, that's Thank what, yeah. So hopefully, much. exactly. You just get a really good night's sleep. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Great. Thanks, Margarita. It's wonderful to be here.